across all of Twitch and YouTube, most Hearthstone players rate cards on a scale of 1 to 5, 1 being terrible and 5 being amazing. While I can see the appeal of making these bold claims, the result ends up becoming muddled. There are multiple videos on YouTube that show different streamers making inaccurate claims about upcoming cards. Claims of this sort are so inaccurate that Trump has made a series where he reviews his own card reviews. These inaccuracies show how complex this game is. Attempting to represent the different aspects of these cards with a number from 1 to 5 does not suffice for accurate representation. Some cards are consistently powerful, others are strong if used correctly, and others still are used to counter other decks. I find representing this difference to be very important, but I still see the merit in objectively measuring a card's worth. To that end, I created a rating system that, rather than having 5 ratings, has 11. One for the lowest cards, one for the highest cards, and nine for all the cards in the middle. I represent each rank with a gag card, to provide visual clarity. Each ranking has a different image and text associated with it, which semi-explain what the rating means. The mana cost on the card is what I would give the card on a scale of 1 to 5, because like I said, I do see value in doing that. The nine middle ratings are broken up into three different groups, starting with simple cards. These cards are just that, simple. Unlike cards that become more powerful depending on their circumstance, such as Whispering Woods, simple cards are more straightforward. Cards with random effects also qualify here, as well as card draw effects. It's worth knowing that a higher rating doesn't guarantee the card is the best choice. For example, I rate Cairn and Wolf Rider the same way, but I'll only put one of those cards in a Face Hunter deck. These cards might be simple, but they still have individual strengths and weaknesses. Anyways, let's look at the rankings, starting with Sadly Lacking. This rank is where pack filler cards generally land themselves, like Furious Etten or Ultrasaur, as well as other cards that are generally of slightly lower value, such as Blood Imp or Cenarius. It's still feasible to maybe make some of these cards work, but players can usually find combinations that work better. If a card gets this rank, I give it a 5% chance to show up in the standard meta, that small chance being dependent on specific synergies or loopholes in design. Our next rating, Fun for the Arena, is par for the course. Most simple cards can fit here nicely. Cards like Mad Bomber, Vicious Scalehide, and Alakir the Windlord qualify for this rank. Like the rating suggests, these cards are decent for the arena, but less likely to be found and constructed. I give these cards only a 15% chance to enter the meta, though that percentage increases when cards like Baku, Gen, and Reno exist. Our highest ranking of this tier is pretty good. It's required that you try to say it like Riparian does, by the way. These cards are still simple, but are powerful enough to compete in constructed play. Examples include Frostbolt, Life Drinker, Argent Squire, and Tyrion Forgering. Because their base power can be an actual threat, I give these cards an 80% chance to get into the meta. Side note about these percentages, these are rough estimations. Class cards, for example, might be strong, but not fit into any decks their class can play. For a quick example, Cave Hydra. While this card is certainly useful, a hunter on turn 3 is rarely worrying about controlling the board, making it such that this card lacks a home. Just remember that a high rating doesn't equate to an auto-include, and everything should be fine. Onto our next group of ratings, complex cards. These cards are typically harder to get value out of than simple cards, but remain balanced by often being stronger. Compare and contrast, Silverhand Knights and Level Up. Choosing between these cards and Arena, players might often pick the minion, since getting multiple Silverhand recruits on the field is challenging. When constructed, decks can be built and strategies executed that make Level Up stronger, strategies that the Silverhand Knight lacks. Hence, these cards get different ratings, despite being equal in approximate value. Moving to the ratings, the lowest one is Stupid Unless It Isn't. These are cards that, most of the time, are a bad idea, but certain circumstances can be created to make them powerful. Examples include Duskfallen Aviana, Cataclysm, Dragon Hatcher, Master Oakart, and tentatively Prophet Velen. I considered giving that card the next highest ranking, but might change my mind in the future, but for now he proves my point here. These cards can become very powerful, but the circumstances needed to create those cases are oftentimes challenging. Oakart is only powerful because Dragon Hatcher exists, and Dragon Hatcher is only powerful because big dragons exist. Take those synergies away, and a card with this rating dies with them. I give these cards a 30% chance of being in the meta, and are notably terrible choices for the arena. However, don't underestimate cards with this rating. 
Master Oakheart hasn't earned the name Master Brokeheart for nothing. The next rating, Decent If You're Decent, is the center rating of this whole system. Examples include Wing Blast, Acolyte of Pain, Knife Juggler, and Archmage Antonidas. These cards are more balanced and easier to use than the Stupid and Less Not cards, while being more complex and varied than simple cards. As such, these cards are usually at the heart of basic combinations. Acolyte of Pain paired with Volcano, Knife Juggler with Call to Arms, Antonidas with the Coin, etc. I give these cards a 55% chance to be in the meta, the deciding factor usually being the synergies the cards have. The last rating here is Amazing If Used Right. Compared to the previous rank, these cards are either about as hard to play and more powerful, or slightly harder to play and much more powerful. Examples of this ranking include Duskbreaker, Mountain Giants, Twilight Drake, and Edwin Van Cleef. This ranking is the ideal, being the most powerful in the hands of a clever or intelligent player. As such, I give these cards a 70% chance to be in the meta, and I'm willing to say a 95% chance that they will be in the meta at some point after their release. Katharina didn't work well in Cobalts and Catacombs, but in the late Witchwood meta she became frightening. On to our final class of cards, tech cards. These cards are the ones that are designed specifically to counter other cards and strategies, being below average in the wrong circumstances and above average in the right ones. An average card in this tier may see play, but that's more dependent on the surrounding meta than it is on the card itself. Strong weapons? Run Swampoos. Strong pirates? Run Galaka Crawler. You face Jaraxxus? Run Sacrificial Pact. For these scores, I'm going to start in the middle, with the straightforward tech card ranking. This is the default for cards like Golaka Crawler, Hungry Crab, Dragon Slayer, etc. These cards are weak if the counter doesn't show up, and strong if it does, fitting the definition of this tier perfectly. The power swings viable with these cards enable them to regulate the meta, making sure that one type of deck doesn't oppress others. Below this is the rank, okay in some metas. This is the ranking I would give a card like The Darkness, or Shadow Word Horror. By themselves, this card might be strong in some matchups, but usually they're counterproductive. Though, it is possible for cards like this to obtain decent synergies, more on that later. Higher up is the rank Excellent in Most Metas. Examples of this include Mind Control Tech, Witchwood Grizzly, Lotheb, and Spellbreaker. These cards still count as tech, but they are powerful enough and useful enough that they can be included in the right decks with little consequence. Even aggressive decks can find appreciation in a card that eliminates taunt. All this together creates our little hierarchy, though there are some grey areas. Notably, cards like Spiteful Summoner, Toxmonger, and Stargazer Luna are somewhere between simple and complex, and cards like Flamestrike and Polymorph are somewhere between complex and tech. For Spiteful Summoner and cards with Recruit, the power of the cards is dependent on how the deck is built, and rarely on how the cards are played. That being said, I usually give them a complex rating, mostly out of simplicity. Perhaps I should give these cards their own unique rating, but for now I think that's too complicated. For Toxmonger and Luna, the situation is slightly different. While strategies can be used to increase their power, Toxmonger doesn't improve much, even in the best case, while Stargazer Luna is still primarily based on luck. As such, I default to the simple ratings, with Toxmonger getting a sadly lacking, and Stargazer Luna getting a pretty good. Similar story for hard removal and board clears. While they can be considered tech against big minions and small minions, those situations are common enough that it's more straightforward to rate them as complex. In short, simple cards are consistent or consistently random, complex cards are useful when used correctly, and tech cards are more or less useful depending on your opponent's cards. For cards in the grey areas, I choose what fits best in each individual case. Now, all we're missing is the last two rankings, the highest and the lowest. I try to rarely give these rankings, because they should never exist. Ideally, all cards receive one of the other nine rankings, but sometimes Blizzard messes up. Some cards become too strong, or others too weak, and while this has been happening less, examples still exist. The highest rating is Crafted Golden. These cards permanently alter the meta, and even after rotating out of standard, can have significant effect on Wild. Examples of these cards include Piloted Shredder, Sap, Blood Reaver Gul'dan, Dr. Boom, and most of the cards that have been nerfed in the past. The good news for Wild players is that more complex combinations can usually outvalue these cards, but in terms of standalone power, this rating is a cut above the rest. 
I will admit that I am sometimes over eager to give a card this ranking, where it often might deserve one of the lower rankings instead. Rest assured that I will do my best to avoid that. And finally, we have Mostest Stupidest. You know what these cards are. Simple cards like Magma Rager and the Bogey Monster are too terrible to just be sadly lacking. Complex cards like Deadly Arsenal are too hard to make work for too little of an end result. And Millhouse Mana Storm would be an okay card if nobody in the whole meta ran spells. If I give a card this ranking, don't use it. Just pretend it doesn't exist, unless it's the punchline of a joke. Magma Rager? Why would you play this card? There are three final notes for the system. First off, synergies. Even the stupidest cards can obtain synergies that make them worthwhile to play. For example, I still give Silver Vanguard a most stupidest ranking, even though it's in a standard deck. It's only because of synergies with Charge Devil Sword and Play Dead that this card is playable at all. Perhaps that qualifies it for stupid and less not, but I feel those synergies speak more for the 8 drops than they do for the Vanguard herself. Point being, cards with low rankings are not automatically disqualified. Depending on the decks they are in and their supporting cards, they may become powerful and significant, or may not. Second, counters and balances. A card may receive a higher ranking and be absent from the meta, because other cards can exploit their weaknesses. Lanessa Sunsorrow is a strong card, but in a meta with silence effects and a focus on tempo, she and the deck she is in are hard to play. The short-sighted may take this as evidence that I don't know what I'm talking about. I challenge those players to come back here after a few expansions and see who was truly correct. That being said, a final disclaimer. I am human, believe it or not. All of these cards are on a multi-dimensional spectrum, being better in some ways and worse in others. I might give a card one ranking, and some may argue it should be a bit higher, others a bit lower, or that it should be complex, or whatever. I will do my best to be as accurate as possible, to place these cards in a neat little box, but I may misplace a card or overlook a key aspect. I encourage you all to discuss this respectfully in the comments and elsewhere. That being said, I think we can all agree that I put much more thought into this than most.